Hello and welcome to episode five of my journey with AC Milan and Football Manager 24. Now, today is a very important day because we are going to be going through the January transfer window in our first season. But before we do that, let's recap the last episode because it was a doozy. We played all of the rivals. He puts it in an in-swinger. And it's Tamori, it's a goal, yes! It's back in, and it's Chiquese! AC Milan are up 2-1. And Ossiman scores. He was turned around backwards. He's literally backwards. He hit his, he hit the ball with the back of his head over Mike Benyon. Finds Teo out wide. A fantastic pass. He brings it into the box. It's in, and it's a goal! Juventus haven't even touched the ball, and Okafor has put it in the net! It's Adli. And it's a goal! I don't even know why he was taking that, but it's a goal. It's his third goal of the season. We were up 2-1 against Juventus. Kick comes in. And it's a goal! It's, it's Malik Chow! AC Milan go up 1-0 in the Derby! And we nearly won every single one of them. They're working it up. It's Lukaku. Put it in the cross, and it's Bilotti. He scores. They've got a lot of men forward. Ace Milan just need a good counterattack here, but it's Ukaku and he scores. Pellegrini puts it in. And they score again. Well, it looks like that is all she wrote. Yeah. Um, I won't let myself forget that one. But it's okay because we still sit pretty on top of the table with Torino and our next match is against Torino. If we win, then we are declared winter champions. If they win, then they are declared winter champions. We do not want a draw. But before we jump into all of that, I do want to address a couple things. If you had been following this from the beginning, you know that this was supposed to be just a beta save that I was trying to get through as many seasons as I could in those two weeks, but I had failed. Uh, I went through some mental health situations, uh, but I am back. I am trying to put these videos out again, and I will continue doing so. Now, this episode was filmed still during the beta, and all the future episodes will be after the beta. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that all um, bears out in the end. Now that that is all out of the way, Let's jump into the gameplay. There is some team news, some transfer news to sneak in there before we start the big match against Torino. Here is a very, very big piece of news. Our very own Teo Hernandez has been named player of, or uh, been named one of the players in World Team of the Year. It's mostly Manchester City players, but Teo Hernandez has found himself within it, along with Neymar, Rice, the classics, Holland, De Bruyne, uh, Bernardo Silva, Ederson, of course. Maybe Mike Mignon will get in there at some point, hopefully. Um, but yeah, this is fantastic news, a real uh, honor for one of our players and for the team. So we have ourselves a situation with Kier. He doesn't seem himself at the minute. He feels like he should be starting more games. He is promised to be a regular starter. He's had eight starts in four substitute appearances. If we look here at our squad selection info and Tamori, he's sitting there high up the list. He's getting plenty of starts and Chow is getting more as well. Kalulu is even being slotted in there. He just doesn't have room at our club, really. Let's discuss the issue with Kier. Let's see, you got something on your mind? I'm supposed to be a regular starter here, but my playing time hasn't really reflected that. What's going on? Let's see. Play you? No. Let's uh, try to compromise. It'd be better if you prepared uh, to accept being used as an impact sub from now on rather than worry about what was previously agreed to. He's getting older. Uh, he's a professional sort of player. He's a model professional, actually. So, uh-oh. Our assistant coach is distressed. Let's uh, see if we can ease him. Yes, he is content. I can do that. Sounds fair enough. 
Sweet. We love it. Leave the meeting. Now we don't have to worry about that. So we are a day before the January transfer window is about to open, and I wanted to take a peek at our dynamic screen here. <clears throat> so we can take a peek at the team cohesion, the club atmosphere, and the leadership support. And this is looking much better than it did at the beginning of the season. Uh, I think the club atmosphere is uh, close to being the same, but our team cohesion is very good. Um, we have a collective mentality. Um, it improves, improves our positioning and uh, players will experience an, improve, ex experience an improvement to vision and reactions, which is great. And uh, the leadership support is going up as well. I've been making sure to on um, every Friday when the training report comes up going in here and just telling anybody who scored above a 7 point, not anything above an 8 or an 8 up gets a good job. Gets a pat on the back and whatnot. And they are responding to it quite well. But this is going to change after uh, some of the transfers come and go. So we'll take a peek at this if there's been a whole lot of activity at the end of the window. It is day one in the transfer window and we've already got an offer for Luca Romero from uh, Lille. Uh, they wanted him for loan. They were going to pay us some uh, money. Oh no, they wanted a mandatory future fee of only a quarter million euros and the club rejected it. So we are thankful for that because right now, Chiquese and Benacer are out on international duty and they are not expected to return until the beginning of February. They are in the African Cup of Nations and uh, we are going to miss them dearly, but we will rely on Romero to cover this right hand wing while Chiquese is gone. And just as I got done saying that, a couple, maybe even a day later, I don't even know, two days later, our club accepted two loan offers to Lens and Rems. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and they are buying them for basically pennies afterwards. So super cool. We'll get like a million euros for this player. Uh, he could have stayed, been a part of the squad and contributed a bit more to the coffers in maybe a year or two. So fantastic, fantastic. And here is some big transfer news. Atletico Madrid has stepped up their chase for Tomori. They're looking to put in a bid for 43 and a half million euros. Uh, Tomori's estimated value is 33 to 44 million. So that is really good, but he has been a key player for us and it would be really rough to lose him midway through the season. Um, it would be awesome if he was replaced with someone who was of similar caliber. We, what we like about him is his pace, his acceleration, and his aggression and anticipation. It makes him perfect to be a covering central defender. He uh, he does great on the left-hand side when Teo moves forward. Tomori can cover all of that space in here. And if Chow goes up and gets beat, he can come in here as well. So. Let's hope that that does not happen. There was already rumors that Adli would be leaving the club, and it looks like it's becoming more and more certain with Olympique Marseille sniffing around for 7.75 million euros. Um, i say that's pretty fair. I, was, I say I wouldn't be too upset about that as long as we got somebody else in to fill in his spot. All right, it is the day of the match, and the fans have spoken. They want us to win. They realize it's a big six-pointer with Torino. It is the Winter Championship match. If we look here at the league table, we're tied on points with Torino right now, and we are 18 games in. The next This game will make it the 19th, and if we win, we will be three points ahead and firmly at the top midway through the season. So let's take a look at our opponent here. I've noticed that their wingbacks have a lot of assists. So they're going to be right up in these areas, I suspect. And they're going to be linking up with the attacking midfielders who are probably going to be making these runs in. Uh, they're going to be chipping them too. And then they're hitting them over to Zapata or 
the wing backs are going to be hitting him off last stitch and then going into there and crossing them in, crossing them in. So we're going to make sure that these wide areas are well protected. Now that does not mean that we want to trap them inside <clears throat> because they're, they've, they've got this Segundo, Segundo Volante coming in and uh, just coming into this middle area and we want to be able to protect that as well. So we are going to stay uh, balanced when we are defending. And we're going to make sure that Rinders is acting as a Carolero here so he can operate in this wide space and follow the wing backs back when Teo Hernandez is too far forward. Kalulu will be moving up into this inverted wing back space, but then dropping wide when we are defending. And Pulisic, instead of being on an attacking mentality, he is going to be dropping back into this area to help with the defense because Loftus Sheik will be getting forward into this role and trying to drive himself into the box, hoping to get some crosses from Teo, Leao, um, and maybe even Rinders from this spot over here. And Pulisic, if he can cut back and, and hit him. Uh, so that is the game plan. Uh, and let's go ahead and give it a shot. So our coach just gave a very interesting suggestion. He suggested that we play Chow here in the in the halfback role um i find that very interesting because if we look at his stats here he can play there if we look at halfback he's got everything that we need to play that role he can jump his marking and tackling are great his first touch is fine his passing and his vision is fine he doesn't really need vision um he, and he's he's just doing very good if we look at adley's his uh, stats just aren't, or his attributes just aren't near as good for that role. He's got slightly better first touch, but that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. But that gives us, just realize, four center backs here. We're going to be playing with four center backs. Maybe we can bring Florenzi in for Kalulu. Um, but I think this is how we're going to, I think this is how we're going to do it. We're going to uh, come in with four center backs and then, if in the second half we're struggling, we will bring in someone else for more attacking support. All right, the match is beginning. We are ready to go. We've got a strong squad out there, very attacking heavy, very defensive heavy. Um, and I think we can take this Torino side. We've prepared well, we've scouted well, and we are going to do this. All right, Milan have the ball. Layout takes it up the left-hand side. It's taken on two players, and he's doing fine. Oh, he finds Loftus-Cheek in the middle, who who hits the volley and scores before a minute even goes by. It's exactly like the Juventus game, although Torino had the ball a little bit this time. Leao does all the work to get it into the attacking third, turns around, and then look at this beautiful just little chip ball right in there, and a first-time shot on the volley. A beautiful goal to get AC Milan rolling and get to the top of the table. Yeah. It's Reinders. Puts it in. Tamori has it. Chow's got it. Reinders has it outside the box. Oh, and it hits the post. Oh, that was so close. That could have been, that could have been an amazing goal. It's Teo Hernandez. Tamori. Teo Hernandez goes up the wing. He gets the ball back. He puts a cross in. It's Olivier Giroud. He tries an audacious header. Very good. This is what we're trying to do. We want to stop them from getting in there. There's Duve and Zapata. Oh, come on. Get back there, boys. Great job from Kalulu. They wanted a penalty. He did what he was supposed to do. Let's see, Torino are trying to respond to the goal right now, trying to get one quick in afterwards, but Mike Mignon is a wall. Whew, it's getting a little tough, though. Torino with the corner kick. Ball comes in. And we're safe. Oh, Milan lost the ball. It's up to Duvan Zapata now. They're on the counterattack from the midfield. Oh, God, it's their attacking midfielder, but... There was a block, so it's a corner now. Corner for Torino. It's Rodriguez. He used to be an AC Milan player. He puts the ball in. And it's another corner kick. 
Torino are trying to get back into this game now. Rodriguez with another outswinger. He puts it in. And it's cleared. And Christian Pulisic gets it on top of the box. He's on a breakaway. He's with Leao. It's 2v2. Oh, he's going all the way. It's Leao. Oh, and Leao just misses it. Oh, my Lord. For If he wants to be a world-class player, he needs to be able to put these away. Torino are just playing it around their back line. Uh, and they're finding space. I think we're going to have to make some tactical adjustments to try and stop them controlling the ball so much. <clears throat> we're one nil up, but I think it'll be good if we put more pressure on them. We don't want to invite too much. Torino have the ball again. No, oh, right through the legs. Reinders tries to take it. No luck. Teo Hernandez. It sures. Ricky. Oh, Illich is getting in. Oh, Mike Mignon makes another very good save. We are trying to push our back line up a little bit. It, the tactic just uh, was engaged. But before that, we were still dropped back a little too far. But we did make the tactical adjustment. Hopefully, we can prevent them playing on up in the middle like that. Like I said, their wings are dangerous, but so are so is the middle. Oh, uh, there's an injury here. Oh, there's two injuries here. Well, Teo's fine, but Loftus Cheek got a hamstring injury. Feels like he could shake it off. It doesn't look like he's gonna shake it off, which is very unfortunate because we don't have a lot of midfield options right now. Um we're gonna have to go with Musa. He plays the exact same role. Um and yeah, we don't want to push it. All right, here you go, Musa. Get on in there. And it looks like we're going into the second half. Yes, 1-1. One, one. It's Milan with the ball. It's Kier, Chow in his new role. Tomori finds Teo. It's Rafael Leao. Oh, he might be all alone here in the wing. Can he beat his man? Oh, he won't try. But it's Teo Hernandez. He puts in an early cross. Can he get it to Pulisic? No. Vanya. Vanya came out. Reinders wins the ball. Milan builds it up from the back yet again. Pulisic on the wing. Kalulu. Making his way downtown. He set off Pulisic. Can he get a cross in? It's Rafael Leao and he scores! It's 2 0. Milan securing their place in the top of the table. They will be crowned winter champions if all goes well. It started with Kalulu. Pushing for space. Pulisic puts in a beautiful cross. Oh, it deflected off one of the Torino players. And Rafael Leao scores with a powerful, powerful shot. Milan 2, Torino 0. Stay with the ball. He's going to bring it up the wing. Puts in the cross. Can Giroud score? Oh, it hits off the post. Oh, my Lord. It could be 3 0 right now. All right, we did take off Kalulu because he had a yellow card, and Florenzi is a fine substitute. And we also took off Giroud because he was exhausted. We brought in Okafor for some fresh legs. We'll probably take off Teo Hernandez as well here in a minute, but we only have two more substitutions. So we're going to wait right until the 80th minute. And the worst thing that could have possibly happened has happened. Mike Mignon has been injured. So we have to bring in Sportiello. I mean, he's not the worst goalkeeper in the world. Not the best. But he will do. We are in the January transfer window, so maybe they'll bring in a, another goalkeeper. Uh, and then we've got one more substitution to make. And um, we don't have a lot on the bench, to be honest. We have some youth players, Adley could come in to help, but I really don't want Teo Hernandez getting a card. Um, he is injured. He has been training lightly. We're going to bring in Bartasagi, one of our youth prospects, to just hold down the fort for us. Uh, actually, you know what? No, we won't do that. We'll bring in Pellegrino. We'll have five center backs on the field. We'll put Tamori over here on the wing. Uh, I thought he would be better than that over there, but uh, I guess not. Um, that'll just have to do, I suppose. And we will defend this lead for the last 10 minutes. Oh, and we'll also go off this attacking mentality. We'll go balanced. We will waste a bunch of time. 
go a bit more direct. We won't build out of the back in case they start pressuring us because we don't have a lot of technique back there. We don't need to counter press really. Um, and we will, we'll drop off. We can take the pressure. We don't mind. We got to stay on the feet because actually we don't need to do that anymore because all of our yellow card players are off except for Leo. And we are good to go. Last 10 minutes. Game management here. Mike Mignon off. Now we just have to hold it. Hold the line, boys. Hold the line. All right, Milan with a corner. We have a lot of center backs on the field, so one of them should score this. Come on, boyos. And it is one of the center backs. It's Malik Chow. Oh, yes. It's beautiful. Oh, wait a minute. There's a VAR checking the goal. Goal awarded. I don't know why, but it's a, it's a goal. Maybe it was offsides or something. Uh, that kind of was offsides. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. It's 3-0. AC Milan, 3. Torino, nil. See, just throw five center backs in the back, and, uh, and you're good to go. Oh, no, we only have four. I forgot. We took Kalulu off. Still only four center backs. Who knew you could do it with four? Last 10 seconds of the game. It looks like we have won this one. Oh, wait a minute. Duvain Zapata. Oh, Sports Yellow makes a great save. The only involvement that he has had in the game. Oh, man. What? That was fantastic. 12 shots, 7 on target. Plenty of XG. We outscored our XG, but a lot. Um, good possession. We are winter champions. And it's the worst sort of news. It's not just a simple injury. He has torn a wrist ligament. He is out. Mike Mignon is out for four to five weeks. But luckily, if we look here at our schedule, our next uh, few mat, our, all of our matches for this month are relatively easy here. We do have an Italian cup, but we're probably going to use Sports Yellow anyways. Um, uh, Mike Mignon is doubtful for the Hellas Verona match, but the next time we meet Torino, Mike Mignon should be back. That'll be February 10th, and that will also mean that all of our players from the Africa Cup of Nations will be back as well, and so will the rest of the squad. Oh, and also, Teo Hernandez is suspended for the next game. We we just love that, don't we? The accumulation of yellows. He's already had two reds. He's had an accumulation of yellows. He's had a rough time this season with his disciplinary record. And look at this. After our stunning performances this week, we have one, two, three, four, five players in the team of the week. Tara Hernandez, Malik Chow for his role as a halfback, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and then the two wingers, Rafael Leao and Christian Pulisic. A very good outing for the team this week. And here's an update on Kier here. Um, we offered him even less. He demanded less. He demanded only squad player, but they offered him fringe player now after that discussion that we had with him. He was willing to accept something a little less, but we can't have him for two more years. We are going to walk away from this deal. We do not want it. Sorry, Kier. It was nice having you on the team, but time for us to move on. Oh, and it looks like somebody has come in and offered him a contract at the end of our, um, at the end of this season. So he'll be moving on, it seems. And here is the first offer for Yassin Adli, the 23 year old midfielder. Olympique Marseille came in offering some money up front on the loan paying most of the wages and then also offering about six and a half million euros. And the club said, nope, that is not how much we value this player. So maybe we'll see next time. Also Torino was rejected in a loan here, but I believe there was some other ones accepted. So it's already got contracts out with the French clubs there. This is some Terrible team news. Olivier Giroud has been injured. He has a hip injury and he will be out for two to four months. An accidental collision in training. Uh, he'll be out two to three months if we leave him to the physio. Um, oh, wait a minute. If we send him to a specialist, it'll only be two months. Send him to the specialist. We will spend the money on him 
But that means he is going to be out whew, right up. Well, it's not going to show it just yet until he continue. But all of this month and all of this month and maybe even miss the intermatch. Hopefully he'll be back for this second leg of the Champions League round of 16. And if things couldn't get any worse, Pobega is now sick. He has a virus. We are going to send him home. We, um, <clears throat> we sent home Calabria. He literally just came back today. He also had a virus. Uh, and we sent him home to avoid this mess, but look at that. Now he's out, and all we have left is Adley, the late two, and Musa. And the late two might be leaving, and he's only a youth prospect anyways. And that's with Chow sitting in the midfield here with Kalulu. Uh, we might bring Calabria on here um, for a little bit more creativity. Calabria's uh, first touch and dribbling, passing, vision, all of that is just much better than Kalulu. And then that will give us a little bit more solidity on the bench as well. Then he can play a center back if we need to. Oh, but the squad is looking pretty thin. And just as I said all that, Victor Eletu is out of the club. So we have two midfielders on the bench in the team. Reinders has it on top of the box. Calabria in the middle. Loftus cheek with an amazing, amazing shot from outside the box with his left foot. Insane. Let's take a look at Rafael Leao's goal. Over to Calabria. Over the top to Rafael Leao. It's two, two assists for Calabria. Rafaelio does amazing there. And Kier had a goal. It was just a nice, simple corner. Kier's just too tall for the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper error. Pulisic has a goal, assisted from Okafor, who came on for Olivier Giroud. And, oh, it was hardly even an assist. But Pulisic had an amazing shot, an amazing goal. And Luka Jovic with another corner kick. Luka Romero putting in some good corner kicks. And that was an awesome game. All right, we just finished out a great game in the Coppa Italia. We won 3-1. Uh, we started a whole bunch of bench players, uh, Bartasagi, Romero, Pellegrino, uh, Adli, Jovic, and we did well. It was a little nervy at first. It was 1-0. They even had a disallowed goal, but we did end up bringing in the big boys, and they've got, they got the assists here. Reinders got a goal right before he came out. Let's look at those goals. Let's see, Luca Romero gets it, Adley out on, out wide, and he puts it in, and Okafor puts it away. It was a brilliant finish. And we will check out Reinder's goal here. <clears throat> see, Musa wins it high up in the field, gives it to Jovic. Rafael Liao, Reinder's making a run into the half space and puts it away with his left foot. We loved to see it. And Luka Jovic gets a goal as well. Pulisic brings it up the wing, brings it all the way up the wing, puts in a decent cross on his right foot, and Jovic puts it away. Absolutely no problem. It was a fantastic win. We will be going on to the next round. And look at that, Pulisic coming off the bench, getting best performer. We love to see it. And it's going to be Torino that we play in the quarterfinals. Torino is currently second in the table, only three points behind us. They are giving everybody else below them a run for their money. Um, even Napoli and Roma down there in seventh and eighth place with 35 points, six behind Torino. They've been doing very well, so that is going to be a very fun match. 
and we did get a wage increase uh, and it's by quite a lot I think um, like 20 million euros or something pretty sure we're down at like 109 maybe closer to 100 now we have 125 we actually have some room in the fine in the payroll we could even move some of that over um, into the transfer budget 124 maybe yeah maybe now the club can make an offer for somebody you know maybe we'll even we'll do that four million euros we'll probably bring in a player for that like a decent youth player and then if our transfer budget goes up too then that would be even better the board has rejected our <clears throat> request to get more funds we wanted to increase this maybe to five million or so it would have been good let's discuss it with the board maybe maybe we'll Maybe Jerry Cardinale will give us some more. I would like transfer funds to um, increase as I currently don't have a fun, enough funds to strengthen the squad. Let's see, we will not be able to get our targets. Um, we need to be able to beat our rivals with key signings. No, let's, uh, we just need to be able to reach our targets of signing some young players. Um, no, he thinks that we have enough money let's see no we don't want to accuse the board of not having ambition um let's just say it's really important you can ask as much as you like all right well i can't say that i'm not disappointed but no more money for or AC Milan in this transfer window, we'd have to sell some players. And it is official. This will be the last season. Simon Kier stays at AC Milan. Uh, we will continue to use him throughout the season. He has been very useful. We only have five center backs anyways, um, but it was nice playing with him. He's been a great role model for the club, been mentoring a bunch of the younger players and we will miss him and now Nise has put in a bid for Yassin Adli but again the club rejected it they did not feel it matched the valuation I think they want more cash up front because we need cash if we're going to buy any players because we have none at the moment but I did ask the board for some more so maybe they will give it to us injury after injury this season Calabria will now be out for five to six weeks. That is absolutely terrible. He just turned sharply and he sprained a knee the ligament. Ligament, yes. Uh, so we will replace him with Kalulu. Um, we did loan in Jimenez. Oh, Jimenez is injured too, six to seven days. Well, it looks like we don't have a lot of cover on that side besides Florenzi. All right, well, we have Florenzi and Bartasagi to cover this area when Kalulu is tired. And another win we have against Cagliari. It's four to one. We had 22 shots, 10 on target. Uh, scored four. Uh, layout did go off on an injury. Hopefully that's not too bad. We will check that out after we check out the replay here. First goal from Rafael Leao, an assist by Teo Hernandez. He comes around the outside and Leao just says, yep, no problem. I'll put that in. We were down one nil. Leao ties it up. We appreciate that from him. Lapidora scored a goal early on. Pellegrino made the mistake. Teo Hernandez with a crazy free kick. He said, why don't I just bash it right through the wall? And he did. Rafael Leao with the second goal in the game. Pulisic comes up. It bounces up. He says, I got it. I'm a tall guy. Puts it in the back of the net. And just for good measure, Malik Chow puts one in for the corner kick. Playing as halfback again because we are very light in the midfield just three center backs right in the middle of the field been working out great uh and Teo hernandez as the best performer and rafael Leao is out for two weeks which is awful because we have atalanta coming up right here and then we have torino in the italian cup we really could have 
used them. Um, but, you know, that's how life is. Injuries in football manager. We have a big match against Atalanta. Um, here is the scouting report. Muriel. Skamaka and Dead Ketelare, who is having a good season with them. Nine goals, one assist. Skamaka, 12 goals. Muriel, eight goals and three assists. So those are the big three right there. And their wing backs are getting plenty of assists. We've seen this before. So we are going to continue with our plan here with three center backs right in the middle. Chow. Uh, playing as a halfback, dropping in to form a back three. Kalulu, oh, and our fourth center back, of course. Kalulu comes up here, plays as the inverted wing back with Reinders playing as the deep line playmaker. Uh, Teo Hernandez <clears throat> going up plenty far. Um, oh, and we'll actually we'll bring uh, Pulisic in as a supporting winger. Um, and if we, if you noticed here, they have two defensive-minded um, midfielders. So we won't have to worry about them. It's just going to be basically five players that we have to deal with. Um, I'm actually wondering if I should bring him back on support and then make him a Mozzella. He'll play up into this space, and then we'll cancel your inside for that are staying narrow so you'll stay out wide Reinders will come up into here Teo will come up into here um and then that way he can stay back and defend on the wings i think that'll be good here can deal with muriel uh the speed won't be a big difference otherwise i'd bring chow in uh we do have Benacer back, but he needs a rest. He's very tired during his international duties. Krunic is back, but he's just not match fit, but we can bring him on during the game. Also, Tommaso Pobega is back, and he will likely see some game time as well. If not now, then during Torino in the Italian Quarter Cup Final. All right, and we decided to go with a mid block here because they're only going to be really attacking with those five players. We have them basically shut down here in the middle. And then if they have their wing backs flying in here, we will have our midfielders close closer by to help our fullbacks defend against the crosses, because that is what we want to prevent. We want them to try to get in here and then we're going to get stuck in and try to hit the <clears throat> or win the ball here and break out on the attack. All right, here we go. The match against Atalanta has commenced. We are on top of the table. I believe we're clear. Ah, I can't remember how many points. Five points. And this will help us maintain that lead for difficult parts in the season. Oh. Atalanta is on the attack. They won the ball in the midfield. Can Kier stop him? Sportiello claims it. It's safe. AC Milan have the ball. Chow winning it in the midfield. That's what we like to see. That's exactly what we wanted from him. Teo in the wing. Okafor. Reinders. Oh, and he hits the side netting. So we haven't been having very good possession. So I have tweak some things. We're going to try to play more positively. We did slow down the tempo a little bit, but we did widen everything up and we're going to make sure that we have players out wide to support one another. Uh, Rinders coming up here, kind of playing as a 10 with Okafor. Actually, you know, we'll get Okafor playing narrow again because we're going to have Teo coming up here and this should help out a little bit. All right, Atalanta have the ball. It's late in the game. I set it on key highlights, and I think that may have been a mistake because we were just pretty evenly matched. We didn't press them too hard because uh, we didn't want to open ourselves up too much. They were able to just kind of do this for a while, I suspect, hitting it all the way back to Musa. And then we'd win the ball when they try to go up here. No, except for this time. Actually making it down the wing. They get a cross in, and... You gotta be kidding me, guys. 
Come on. You're supposed to be stopping the crosses. That is the goal. Florenzi, you're fresh. You, you've got fresh legs. Come on, do the work. He just juked you out. Teo Hernandez, you can't stop that. Oh, that's what happens when you don't have a good goalkeeper. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, we've gone on all out attack. Can we get anything in these dying minutes? Oh, uh, no, but they do. Oh, we did not do well this game. The winter is starting to wear on us. Missing Leao, we're missing Min Yun. Couldn't stop the goals. Couldn't make the goals. We need Leao, Giroud, Min Yun. It is hard dealing without them. Can we get a goal in the last 15 seconds here? Okafor on the wing. Musa, Teo, Pobega. Yeah, hey. We get a consolation goal. At least we got one. They didn't get that free kick. Oh, what an unfortunate loss. We really wanted to win this game. It's Atalanta. They're a big opponent. They're going to be closer in the table now. And I, we haven't even seen Torino play. Torino might catch up. They might put some points on us. And that is full time. Uh, the game that could have been. We were pr pretty evenly matched the whole time. They had more possession than we did. We didn't press them that hard. And it looks like we really should have. Uh, what? Uh, Pobega is our best performer. That says volumes about how this game went. And Torino has done it. They beat Empoli 3-0. They are tied with us on points. I swear to God, if we don't get first play, if we don't win the Serie A because of Torino, I'm going to lose my mind. It did put Atalanta in third, so I'm sure they're happy. They're above Juventus. Inter and Roma are still way the hell down there. So we just got to keep on trucking. Holy moly crapaloni. The board just gave us 60 million euros in the transfer budget uh, a few days before the end of the window. Um, I am pleased to announce that the board have raised the current transfer budget to help achieve a high position in the league after exceeding expectations. Holy crap, I hope our... Uh, I hope our people start making some moves. All right, it is transfer deadline day. Our club has made no moves for any new players despite us having a fantastic transfer budget. There are some rumors we could bring in Fagioli for 64 million euros. Um, and it looks like Fakayo Tomori might have some interest from Atletico or Paris Saint Germain. So we're going to take part in the deadline day and hopefully something comes of it. But before we can finish the transfer deadline day, we do have to play the Coppa Italia quarter finals. If we win, we will have to play Lazio. Let's check out the team selection that we have here today. Luka Jovic up top. Okafor and Romero on the wings. We have Musa, Pobega, and Benacer in the midfield. And then Teo will put him on attack. Tamori, Chow, Kalulu, and Sportiello. Um, Bignon, he can come on the bench just so he can feel included. Um, but he's not going to play. He's still not fully fit. He's got six more days. We're not going to risk it. <clears throat> not for the Copa Italia. We're going to go ahead and attack. Um, do what we do best. And oh, we're going to go for the high press. We're not going to get stuck in. We are going to step up more. We're going to try to step the, stop the crosses and prevent the goalkeeper distribution. And here we go. Milan versus Torino for 
the Coppa Italia quarterfinal. It's Teo with the throw in. He gives it to Jovic. Teo on top of the box. Oh, and he puts a shot in and it's deflection and he scores off his right foot. No one expected him to take the shot off his right foot, but he had the space and he went for it and it paid off. Six minutes in, AC Milan are already 1-0 up at home in the Coppa Italia quarterfinal. Look at that. Oh, the goalkeeper may have had it if he didn't make that block. Nothing from the corner, but Milan saw the ball and plenty of men forward. Teo Hernandez is going to take another shot. He does and he scores. Oh, my Lord. Teo Hernandez is on fire today. 2-0. In the cup, and it looks like we are going to be playing Lazio in the semifinals. Oh, look at that shot right in the bottom corner. The goalkeeper probably should have done better, but it always looks different in slow mo. Torino with the free kick. Oh, it's bobbling around the box. They still have it. Oh, they wanted a penalty. The ref says, absolutely not. Loftus Chiefs got the ball now. That's Luca Romero. Oh, he gives it to Jovic, who's all alone in the middle. Jovic, oh, he puts off the shot, but he could not convert it. Shame. Milan clear it, but not out of their defensive area. It's on top of the box. It's a shot. Oh, and it hits off the post, and Duven Zapata puts it in on the rebound, although VAR is going to have a look at this. Torino are, they might still be in this game. No, the goal is disallowed. Offsides. Oh yeah, look at him. He's just hanging out over there. I'm gonna throw in a substitution just at the last few minutes. We don't have many. Um, we can bring someone on for Musa, I suppose. Um, now we'll let Reinders sit. He's tired. Adley. You're in. Just go play as a deep lying playmaker. It's Kalulu. Oh, we should have told him to waste some time. That's okay. It's Luca Romero. He shoots and he scores. It's a deflection. It's 3 0. Oh, it's, it's an own goal. Luca Romero will not get credited for the goal. I wonder if that was that his first goal for the club this season. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember, but. It's a shame he would have liked that to have his no now that was going wide. 3-0 for AC Milan. We have made our way to the semifinals of the Coppa Italia. We did it in front of our home fans. They all appreciate that. We we didn't dominate the game, but we did outscore. I mean, we only got 0.65 xG. And then three goals. So that was mostly the work of the big man right there. Teo Hernandez, the smiling face. They got quite a bit of XG too. What a fantastic game. Thank God that the club rejected a loan offer for Noah Okafor. They had a future <clears throat> fee they were going to pay for him. Yeah, this is uh, this would have been very, very bad. Uh, I'm glad that this did not happen. We keep getting lucky. There, there have been four different loan offers for Okafor, and we very much need Okafor right now. Otherwise, we would have Jovic on as a striker because Giroud is out, and we would have very little depth on the wing. So. Hopefully that stays put. We're almost all the way through the transfer window and no real activity has happened at our club besides just some players being like youth players being loaned out. But um, yeah, uh, the only way that we would have any activity is if we sold some players, you know, Kalulu is wanted for some money. Um, Adley, Pobega. Everybody else is just wanted on loan. Uh, Calabria, but he's injured. So it looks like we will have the exact same squad right through 
the rest of the season. This just in, there is a transfer story and for Pobega, Wolfsburg want him for 9.75 million euros. That is his evalu or his valuation. And that would be really bad because he's one of our homegrown players. He's one of our Italian players and we need him for our squad registration. Let's hope nobody puts in a bid for him. Bartis Sagi was just offered to be loaned out and it looks like he'll be bought for about um, over a million euros, 1.3 million euros in the future by Aston Villa, which would be bad if we don't get a replacement because he, he and Florenzi are only backup left back. So we would have to come up with some solution to figure that out if he is sold. And just like that, Chaka Traore has been sold for 1 million euros. It will uh, likely be raised to 2.5 million. But he was a good backup for us, and now he is also gone. And it looks like Daniel Maldini will be sold from AC Milan. He will be going to Spezia at the end of the season. He is on loan there. Uh, there must have been an option to buy, and he is going to take it. That is the end of the Maldini era here at AC Milan. Well, the transfer deadline day is over and it only made things harder. That's why it's called the director of football challenge. The one that hurt the most was the sale of Bartasagi. He will be joining Aston Villa permanently at the end of the season. He was a very good youth product. Uh, great ath athletic skills, pretty smart, good technique. He was getting better. Um, we needed him as left back cover. Now we only have Florenzi. I, we don't have anybody else who can feasibly play that position over there. Maybe Chow. <clears throat> I guess, yeah, we'd have to play Chow there. Um, that's the only only real option that we have if Florenzi and Teo are out, which with Teo's disciplinary record, we can assume he's going to be out again at some point. Uh, so, well, this is going to be fun in the future. One positive that comes out of this is that our dynamics for our team is uh, hasn't changed at all. It hasn't um, gone down, hasn't decreased. Uh, the team cohesion is good. Club atmosphere is excellent. The leadership support is also good. I've only been here for a short period of time, so that makes sense. This is still all stable, and the social groups are tightened up really nicely. Um, you know, everybody seems to have a group. Calabria seems to be in the secondary social B group all the way down here. Our captain Giroux, our vice captain up there, the core social group, all the French people. Um, so that is at least one good thing that we can take from all this. Well, that was a slightly disappointing transfer window. Um, I thought about it afterwards and I think I can kind of blame the squad registration. It, it is absolutely stuff packed. We can't even include everybody into the Champions League registration. So maybe that's it. I mean, we had plenty of money there at the end. We could have brought in a player or two, um, but, but we didn't. We actually lost players. It's going to be difficult. It's going to make the rest of this save difficult. And I'll be playing on the full version now after this and i don't know how that's going to affect the tactics or you know how the the, the team cohesion is going to be affected so it, it's going to be a very interesting second half of the season uh, we're doing well we set ourselves up on a very good platform so now it's just about following through on that we did do well in our matches except for the one against atalanta yes i know but that's okay. We're going to keep trucking on. It's it's a tough season ahead of us. We're going to try to get as many points as we can where we can. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for making it to the end of this episode. Uh, if you made it this far, I know it was a long episode. If you made it this far, please be sure to like it. Uh, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I will have another episode out for you very soon, I hope.
Thank you so much.